Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been, well, like a week since I last um, shared the video on my new website. A lot has happened and I don't even know where to start, but never mind. I'll just touch on the basic. This is going to be a non-topic. In other words, there's no specific topic to discuss. So I'm going to rant about few things I feel I should bring to your attention. Let's just start with Ngozi Fulani. You know, the lady whose real name we later discovered is Madeleine Henley. Madeleine Henley is from Barbados. She's not a Nigerian. Nowhere close to Nigeria, not even an African you know, from African countries. She's just from Barbados, a Bajan, so-called. She's not a Nigerian. Let me give you a brief background or profile about her. She's one of those people, you know, one of those characters you come across, they try to let go of their African heritage or let go of their African descent. In other words, um, they try to um, form their own Personal, personality, in other words, it kind of, it kind of have an um, identity crisis. You know, they are neither British, even though she was born here. She's not even claiming so much of Barbados, where she came from. She's now claiming to be, you know, like pro-African you know, and, and trying to um, celebrate African heritage and the process. They get it completely wrong. They don't even know who they are. That's why I'm using the word as identity crisis, because we don't we don't even know what she's trying to portray. So when we've heard what has been going on in Buckingham Palace, the turmoil, the commotion, the accusation of many kinds, including racism or what have you, going on in the press for the past one week, I did a bit of research about her and I found out I've met people like her, you know, in the past, all you need to do is go to Notting Hill Girls, you see them dress up, they try to emulate African culture, they dress up in some outrageous way, trying to emulate or portray an image of an African, and they get it completely wrong. That's why I'm using the word identity crisis. So that's what Mandley Handley, Mandley Handley is from Barbados. She's not Ngozi, as Ngozi Fulani, and besides there's no such name as, um, Ngozi Fulani in Nigeria. Fulani is a tribe in, in Nigeria, in West Africa, not just Nigeria uh, 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 as a whole. It's just a tribe, but she chose to identify herself with that particular tribe, which in a way is very confusing. Ngozi is a name, you know, is a Nigerian name from people who originate from the Eastern, you know, Eastern Nigeria, like the Igbo tribe, basically. So she speaks those two identities, Ngozi from Nigeria and then Fulani from West Africa, and then form that kind of identity and cause all so much chaos and confusion in the world, claiming to be who she's not. See, this is the thing. When you expose yourself, the press will definitely do their own work. What has happened is a case of where the press has gone completely mad and investigated so much about her otherwise known as um, investigative journalism. So they've, they've exposed the little we knew about her or so much now as it seems to be. So that is a precious page and that's what we have now observed being that she's not the person she claimed to be. Who is she exactly? That is a question. Who exactly is she? Having caused so much confusion commotion, confusion, false sense of identity, racism even thrown in. This is so bad, you know. So when this mad woman came, dressing like God knows what, <laughs> so let's change the topic slightly from Ngozi Fulani, as fake as she could well be. And then focus on um, just I just want to talk about nothing specific. So, like I said earlier, it's it's a, a non-specific um, topic. In other words, I'm going to pick on anything and then talk about it. But let's start by talking about the weather here in London. Um, it's very very cold. You know, really really winter weather as you would expect. It's really really icy. It's I think there's a snow on the way. Who knows? And Nigeria, I gather, is the Amatan period. Lucky you. So at least you don't feel the cold, you know, 
as much as we do. Hamatan, I know it can be cool, but it's not like it's nothing to compare with what we are going to experience um, in the coming winter, or the winter is more or less here. So, um, so far it's been good. I'm still working on my blog, to be quite honest, I'm really taking my time, but I'm nearly there. So just to let people understand that um, there's no applique to leave comments, but um, I don't think there's any applique to leave comment. What you would come across is a feedback. So there will be an applique for you to click and then leave your feedback on it. Otherwise, I mean, you can always wait until everything is complete, but in the interim, I'll be sharing um, some videos about a specific topic, um, such as interesting trending news, and as well as, you know, talking about my book, you know, different chapters, I'll be, rec I'll be um, reviewing different chapters. Um, I did promise that I was going to discuss a chapter where I mentioned my mother, and let me tell you something very interesting. When I wrote that chapter and focused on my mom, I rang her and I said, listen, there's a chapter on my book which I'm talking about you. And she was a bit, um, I don't you know, she was like, why are you talking about me in my book? I said, well, I'm talking about you in my book. You're my mother. So I can talk about my childhood experience. I can talk about, you know, something interesting about it, about our family, which I did mention a lot, if, if you've read my book, I did mention how my my childhood growing up, what I experienced, what how we enjoy a very good family life. You know, I did mention that, and I gave some specific dates and the town because my my dad moved a lot, and um, growing up he was moving. My dad was the director of USC. Um, in Nigeria, director of U.S. in the Eastern Nigeria, U.S.C. United African um, Company or something like that, and then Gosha, which was a German company, but they were quite huge in the West African coast. So my dad was very, very busy, and then um, of course my dad was next to Chief. Um, what's his name? Sorry, um, C.O.E. A baby, Stella Basanjo's dad. So my dad was like seconded along those lines on the USC side or the there's another name I can't even recollect now I'm growing up so my dad did a lot of traveling there was a lot of traveling we are moving from different town Lagos, Port Harcourt, Enugu you know name it growing up so we did a lot of traveling around so that's why I speak a bit of Igbo and I speak a bit of Yoruba that is a fact I do you know, but um, I don't brag about other dialects because most dialects in Nigeria, we don't, they don't speak other people's language apart from Igbo and Yoruba. Nobody cares about other dialects in Nigeria. That's why I don't, unlike some of my friends, you know, they boast about, you know, they show off speaking Yoruba fluently and they show off speaking Igbo fluently. I don't, but I understand both language, you know, to the best of my ability. So... I'm going, I do, I'm going to review certain chapters. So I'm going back to this point I made about my mom. So I said she was um, a bit um, concerned in the sense that um, she was wondering what I was writing about her. But um, eventually she read, you know, and then um, she couldn't believe that at that particular age, at that age I was, I could still remember, you know, stuff around our family life, what we were doing at the point in time, even though I was very young. I mentioned in the book, I did. So, as a parent, you need to be careful what you portray to your children. You might think they are very young. There might be a, a time, some points at some point in their life a time at some point in their life they will recall their childhood you know so that's what i did it wasn't anything, anything negative no no i had a very happy child, childhood you know growing up my parents were very very strict my mom background in education she was a trained teacher i'm talking about teachers training college of the ancient days in nigeria so she was very very strict uh, you know, we were a bit relaxed around my dad, but my mom, being a typical mother of our generation, she was very, very strict. 
Right, it's Christmas time, and sometimes I think we need to try and help each other in a way. If, because the reason why I'm saying is because um, there are people out there who are really, really in genuine hardship. Not just because of Christmas, but sometimes the pressure is more during Christmas time. So if you can help, especially here in the UK, we have what we call the food bank, which is there's a point around the supermarket. I think it's mainly by the entrance where you can drop a bit of your shopping, like, you know, food stuff or provision. You drop it there and there's a... Um, agents or so there are other charities organization they act as agents and they know where to distribute where the needs are required in other words they know people who actually and desperate need of this help so they know where their distributions are targeted in Nigeria, I don't know much about, but again, you have beggars, you speak people by the roadside, sleeping under the bridge, and those are the most vulnerable people in a society. You can give them money, but personally, I prefer to buy food for them, because the reason being that, um, I don't want to feed some drug habits, with, you know, to feed their habits, give them money, and then they use the money to go and buy drugs to feed their habits. So it, 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 it's, a, it's something we need to be very specific, specific about. So you know who the right people are. You know the ones who genuinely need your help. So you need to be very, very selective. It's Christmas time. The pressure is here. With the high cost of living, situation is even getting worse. We don't know how long for. But again, we, are always, we, are, we live in a society whether it's the situation of high cost of living or not, there's always a certain section of society who are greatly deprived. Deprived in the sense that um, most of them don't have the basic existence. In other words, they haven't got what's the basic thing to make life comfortable for them. They don't enjoy the luxury most, some, well, few people do. I won't say majority. Hell no. There's no such. So only few people enjoy basic luxury the majority are still struggling to put food on the table so that is why i'm using this video to create an awareness and see what you can do to help thank you very much for watching so i'll be reviewing my um book um depends on what chapters i pick up but obviously i'll write to use this platform to pro to promote my book and overall to promote what I stand for so thank you very much again for watching until next time take care bye